You want your A players to play A when you're a coach. And if you get your A players to play A ball, usually everybody else falls in line. Fourth down Bengals and one. The football gods only do this right. Aaron Donald wanted that ring. Can he do it? When you're talking about AD, you're trying to do your best to get him the great matchups that he can get that you know he can win. And those guys challenge you to find spots that they can go out and win. What their role is going to be is to dominate. Hands creepy. They rush for it. Burrow to throw for it. He's hit. He flings it away on fourth down. Aaron Donald got there. And that's what challenges us as coaches. Donald takes his helmet off in celebration. How do we get A players to play A football all the time? Rings for the Rams. A Lombardi trophy for Los Angeles. How do you get that done? It's challenging the other guys, challenging those players, challenging your coaches, challenging yourself. I told you! I told you! I told you! <laughs> I'll have plenty of time to look back and say some of the great things that we did when I retired, when it was all said and done, but right now it's really about the guys you're around, it's the people first to help us win the next championship. You can kind of say my career began in the NFL with the New York Jets. When Herm Edwards got the job as a Jets head coach, and he was able to come across the field and venture onto the Hofstra campus. He turns the corner, looking, throwing on the run. It's going to be batted down. Fine play by Raheem Morris. He gave me an opportunity to go over there as an intern and asked me what I was doing that summer. He liked my energy, kind of felt the vibe between me and my defensive backs at the time. He gave me an opportunity to come over and really join his staff and be a part of it. The fact that they were so close it gave me more access probably than most people have. And it was really, uh, for me, a great experience. It was the NFL, it was the Tampa 2 defense, it was Herm Edwards with the great life lessons he was able to give me throughout his coaching career there with the energy and some of the stuff that he's done, being a similar background, defensive backs and coaching the same kind of walks of life that I have been doing for the last couple of years. And then I was fortunate enough to be lucky to be a part of the 2002 championship being able to win a Super Bowl as a young coach, as a quality control coach, being able to work under Mike Tomlin, Monty Kiffin, Rob Marinelli, Joe Barry, John Gruden being our head coach, being able to work there and win a championship, the first one in organizational history, um, I think is really special. How has the shift happened for you in your career where like, hey, I'm not just coaching at the DBs anymore, I'm not the GA at Hofstra anymore. No doubt. Like, I'm now a guy that's looked to as another voice in the room and a leader. Their shift really happened probably when me and Mike Tomlin separated when Mike Tomlin was able to go to the Vikings and I was able to go to Kansas State to go out there and lead a defense and be able to do it and from, the, from scratch. Hey, Bob, Coach Cavello, Coach Cavello, get all the defense down here, all the defense. Be able to work with guys like Scott Frost and Matt Wallace dead, be able to take those guys to different levels to talk about how we wanted to do it, where we wanted to do it, and when we wanted to do it, and lead those young men to bring it back to the National Football League was something that I was really appreciative of by Bruce Allen, you know, by that Buccaneers organization, you know, by the Glaziers, by all of those people bringing me back um, for a second stint to really go out there and put it on display and what we could do and how we can do it. When I got the job in Tampa, I was very young, 32 years old and I got paired with Mark Dominic, who was also very young. So we were kind of going through growing pains together. And I think those things, based on our relationship and previous relationship, really helped us. And it helped us build that 10 and 16. That was the youngest NAP team in the National Football League at the time. But I really think it helped us also have some immediate failures that next year. The Tampa Bay Bucks fired head coach Raheem Morris today after three years at the helm. When are you ready to be a head coach, right? You never really know. And the best thing I could do from that experience was share those experiences with people that I was working with directly after that. So the next opportunity came was a little bit unfortunate when you get a really good friend like Dan Quinn fired in the middle of the season and you're asked to take over as the interim head coach. I think that was a really great opportunity for me. And we had a little bit of success, obviously not enough. You know, I think those experiences shape you. I think those things form you. There are no such thing as bad teams. There are only bad leaders. And those two opportunities that I had, I didn't have great leadership, the leadership that you need to win football games. And the next opportunity that you get, that's what you got to go out there and be. You got to be a really good leader and go lead the teams. What'd you say, Burgess? What'd you say, Terrell? What'd you say, Terrell? Don't play with me because I already told you what happened because I'm going to have to f you up. Now you're going to f me up, huh, Burge? Now you're going to see. I got you. Look, I got you on tape, too. Look. I got you on tape threatening me. That's cool. I got I got him on tape. I set your ass up. I'm going to f him up. <laughs> <laughs> the juice is kind of like authentic. I come to work with like just such a youthful exuberance of energy that I want to express it to those guys so they can go out and play really fast and really hard. If you look at me on game day, I kind of go reserved, right? And, and it's the reason is because that's the emotional day for the player. You know, the emotional day for the coaches, for me, 
is within practice. Here we go. We still got gunners here, gunners here, gunners here, gunners here. Right now, we're working chop down. Working your chop, working your chop, working your chop. On the rock, on the rock, you're on the move. It's within the preparation. It's within the studying of it all. It's within walking around these guys in the building to make this environment at the very best that it can be. Overemphasize the drill. There you go. Yeah! That's what I've been waiting for. The charisma and the presence is, is unparalleled. He brings it every single day. You know, you see some people that have that kind of energy and you're like, are you really like that every single day? It's a counter, it's a counter, it's a counter. Nice, 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 nice. We always talk about consistency as the truest measurement of performance. I don't think I've ever seen Raheem have a bad day. Oh, oh he's seated. He used, oh, he, he used his hands. I gotta get a little grass, Rochelle, a little faster. Oh, I ain't turn my shoulders on him. Oh yeah, Koski, that's gonna look good. That's look good on air. That's look good on air. So we put the pause on you boys. Hey, break it down, man. I got five seconds. Good work, fellas. Oh no, I'm tired now. <laughs> he's just got such a great way about himself. And then, you know, for me, he's a person that I heavily lean on and rely on in terms of bouncing things off of him. That was good. That was really good. I like the tempo because I like doing it at that point. Yeah. Because last year when we did the seven on seven. It's almost like a, uh, yes. instead of it was like a, it was like a work, it was like a build up to it, you know? He's got some experiences that I maybe I haven't been through before and, and he's got great perspective and I can't say enough good things about what a stud Raheem Morris is. But the communication was phenomenal. Now I know it's day, now I'm not going to get carried away because it's but, day one. But we can correct off of, I, I just like they were talking. Yeah, no doubt. In my opinion, the best coaches are the best thieves. The guys that are able to be around any walk of life. You be you! You mentioned Gru, you mentioned Mike Tomlin, those are my football professionals. And you're able to distill those attributes and those real life experiences from those people. And also being able to be nosy around all the other great coaches I've been around. The Matt LaFleurs, the Sean McVeighs, Kyle Shanahan, and all of those guys that really built my resume up. You steal those attributes from those guys and you build upon your character and it makes you become you. Where you're from makes you part of you. Where you've been makes you a part of you. The systems you've been a part of, all the things that you acquired, the knowledge. And then some of my experience of being on offense, I think from a defense perspective, the more knowledge you have about how they want to defeat you, how they want to come at you, how they want to attack coverages, how they want to attack their run game, I think that's helped me be a, become a better defensive coach as well. That was awesome! I thought I was going too! And then the last year, you know, being able to come here and absolutely have my goals set and my mindset to having to win a championship here with Sean as the head coach, with Les as the general manager, and coming here and knowing that was the whole demeanor, that was the whole purpose. Being able to say that to him and be able to tell him, I got no other arterial motive but to come here and help you win a championship and be able to go out there and execute it, I think it's like the most fulfilling parts of your career.